Hello friends, this is Gru speaking. I originally posted the disturbing manga iceberg in five separate videos that I made as I went. I figured it might be worth putting them all into one video for convenience sake. I did something a little bit different with this iceberg. I essentially took several different previously made icebergs, as well as my own general research, and made this iceberg myself as a standalone video iceberg. I know there were some entries that people had hoped would be on it, and don't worry, I'll likely make another video in the future covering even more horror mangas, but for now I hope you enjoy what I've put together. There's almost two hours of content and over 100 entries, so if you haven't seen any of these before, I hope you like it, and if you have and want to watch or listen to it again, I hope this is an easier way to do that. If you want to support my work, consider checking out my Patreon in the link below. I'm actually going to be adding uncensored versions of the last few tiers of this iceberg on there. This is the stuff that I couldn't add to YouTube because it would either just get removed or heavily restricted. So if you're interested in seeing the really gnarly stuff, you can join my Patreon and watch that there, along with any other uncensored videos that I post in the future. Thank you, and without further ado, this is the complete Disturbing Manga Iceberg. Tier 1 Berserk. Trying to go over the story for Berserk would take all day because this series has been going on for decades at this point, but essentially it follows the adventures of Guts the Swordsman. There are several story arcs, but the series is known for its intense and graphic depictions of violence as well as its complex and mature themes. It's set in a medieval inspired world where humans are constantly at war with each other and supernatural creatures such as demons and spirits roam the land, and it's been praised in the genre of grimdark fantasy. Like I said, there's a lot of Berserk content out there, and it can be daunting to get into, but what can I say, it's known as one of the most badass mangas ever written. Gantz. Gantz has a really cool story concept. Essentially, a pair of high school students are struck and killed by a subway train after attempting to save a homeless man on the tracks. After being killed, they find that they've been transported into a Tokyo apartment where they meet other clueless participants in the same situations. The pair soon realize that they're not allowed to leave the apartment. At one end of the room, there's a large black sphere known as the Gantz. It then kind of plays like a video game. The Gantz gives the players missions that consist of killing targets. They're also given suits that have superhuman capabilities and sci-fi style weapons. On successfully completing these missions, they earn points which they can eventually spend on new weapons or even the possibility of being freed from the game. They do have downtime where they return to the normal world in between missions, but if they tell anyone about Gantz, their heads will explode. Like I said, it's a really rad concept and has since been adapted into an anime, video game, and even a live action film. I should probably also mention that the manga is heavy on the violence and gore, which is why it's made it onto this list. Helsing. Helsing is a horror manga series about the titular organization Helsing, which is dedicated to fighting supernatural threats in the world, particularly vampires. The story follows the powerful vampire Alucard, who serves as a member of Helsing and its primary weapon against other vampires and supernatural creatures. The characters face numerous enemies, including rival vampire factions, religious cults, and government organizations. And of course, all of this featuring graphic violence and horror elements. And I mean graphic. There are some brutal kills and injuries in this series, and I'm all for it. Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man is one of those mangas you hear about and go, okay, a man transforms into a chainsaw abomination. Too goofy, they're running out of ideas. Then you read it and it's actually really good. Anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory. A human merges with a devil giving him chainsaw powers. It's wacky, but in the best possible way. High School of the Dead. High School of the Dead is the quintessential zombie survival manga that follows a group of high school students as they're caught in the middle of a zombie outbreak. It borrows a lot of the themes from standard zombie films such as survival, morality, and the breakdown of society in the face of a crisis, but with the typical manga style and tropes such as fan service. A lot of fan service. Mirai Nikki. Mirai Nikki, aka Future Diaries, is pretty high concept. Basically, the god of space and time begins a game involving 12 people. These 12 are given what are called Future Diaries that can tell the future up to 90 days. The goal of the game is to eliminate the other diary holders. The last survivor is meant to be the replacement for this god. This manga has been praised for its intricate plot and character development, as well as its exploration of complex psychological themes. But why is it so disturbing? Well, the series deals with some very heavy subject matter. One of the diary holders is a straight up terrorist responsible for several bombings, including one that kills kids. There's of course some graphic violence, as well as some pretty intense depictions of sexual assault. So yeah, it can get heavy. Elfin Lead. Elfin Lead is a dark fantasy and psychological horror manga series that revolves around a genetically modified species called the Declonius. 
who possess telekinetic powers and are hunted by the government. The story is centered around Lucy, a Declonius who is initially kept in captivity but escapes and becomes a fugitive. She is pursued by the government agents who seek to eliminate all of her kind and by a young man named Kota who becomes caught up in the conflict. This manga really doesn't pull any punches. The first chapter entails Lucy's escape from the facility and she just straight up wrecks everyone with her psychic powers. It's really cool and the series doesn't let up from there. I should probably point out that Elfin Lead is German for Elf Song. Just thought you should know. Claymore. Claymore is a dark fantasy manga series that takes place in a medieval-like world where humans are terrorized by shape-shifting demons called Yoma. In order to combat the Yoma, an organization known as the Claymore was created, consisting of women who are part human and part Yoma, possessing extraordinary strength and regenerative abilities. The main protagonist of the series is Claire, a young Claymore who seeks revenge against a powerful Yoma who killed her family when she was a child. Along with her fellow Claymores, she travels from town to town fighting Yoma and protecting humans while struggling with her own inner demons and the constant threat of becoming a full Yoma. The Yoma are pretty brutal and the series doesn't hold back on the violence. There's one particular chapter where an awakened being, which is a Yoma that's fully transformed and evolved into a more powerful and dangerous form, sticks his phallic shaped tongue into a character's guts and something about that just makes me squirm. I don't know, man. Corpse Party. Corpse Party is a fan favorite Japanese horror game where a group of high school students experience an earthquake that transports them to some kind of alternate dimension where they're stalked by the souls of people who have previously been trapped there. The game has had several manga adaptations which give more detail to some of the more disturbing imagery. Tomie. Tomie is a manga by Junji Ito and is actually his first published work. It revolves around the character Tomie who possesses an irresistible charm and manipulative power over men. She drives them to acts of violence and jealousy leading to brutal confrontations and even death. Women are also affected by her, often driven to madness. Tomie is killed repeatedly, but her regenerative abilities allow her to come back to life and spread her curse to other victims, making her effectively immortal. Her origins are never really explained, but she's hinted to have existed long before the events of the manga. Each chapter serves as a different story where different characters encounter Tomie in her various forms, some with their own arcs and returning in later chapters. Tomie's regenerative abilities, partly fueled by cannibalism and assimilation, are showcased as she can quickly recover from mortal wounds and replicate herself by sprouting unnaturally from any part of her body. Radiation accelerates her healing process and her cells can transform a victim into a Tomie via an organ transplant. Even dismembering her corpse can unwillingly allow more Tomie copies to grow and spread. Locks of her hair are even dangerous and can burrow into victims' brains to possess them. Even if Tomie's body is not injured, it will attempt to sprout another Tomie through tumorous growths when emotionally stressed. Fire is the only method to destroy Tomie for good, but only if the flesh is completely carbonized. Uzumaki Speaking of Junji Ito, we might as well talk about Uzumaki, probably the most well-known or at least one of the most popular of his works, and for good reason, it's really good. It follows the strange events that begin to happen in a small town as people begin to obsess over the shape of a spiral. There's way too much to cover, but essentially every chapter deals with some different supernatural horror, like students turning into snails, bodies contorting into spiral shapes, and one of my personal favorites, a maternity ward gone mad. It just keeps becoming more and more bleak as the town descends into pure chaos. This eventually escalates into cosmic horror territory, but I won't spoil any of it because I really think you should just go and read it. It's a masterpiece. Goblin Slayer Goblin Slayer is a really gritty, dark fantasy manga centering around the titular Goblin Slayer on his quest to kill every goblin he comes across. The world of Goblin Slayer is very similar to that of Dungeons and Dragons where bands of adventurers set off to complete quests. There's even an interesting easter egg where the adventurer sign-up sheet looks very similar to a typical D&D character sheet. Anyway, in this world goblins are a very common nuisance, attacking villages and stealing their women to use as sex slaves. A young and naive priestess joins a group of new adventurers who plan on taking out a cave of goblins, but underestimates them and the entire party gets wiped out and death isn't even the worst part. Two of the women in the party are mercilessly taken advantage of while they lay dying. It's really brutal. But right before the young priestess has the same fate, Goblin Slayer shows up and just destroys these goblin mofos. Thus begins Goblin Slayer. I like the mystique around Goblin Slayer and the fact that he doesn't even have a real name. He just calls himself Goblin Slayer. That, that's awesome. It's a horrific manga at times, mostly because of the graphic violence done to both the adventurers and the goblins themselves, as well as the horrible things the goblins do to women. Gyo. 
Gyo, meaning fish, is another Junji Ito manga. This one is about a couple who go to an island on vacation when they encounter a fish with legs. Soon they discover all manner of marine life with legs crawling out of the sea, including a great white shark which attacks them. They eventually escape the island, but the horde of walking creatures now begin to overrun Tokyo. They discover that this is a product of research into a virus during World War II that causes its host to produce a deadly and repulsive stench in a desperate effort to turn the tide of war. They created the legs as a mechanism to send the virus across enemy lines. That is one of the most wild premises I've ever heard, but that's what's so great about it. Like, who else would come up with this stuff? Devil Man. Devil Man's a manga released back in 1972 and has since become one of the most purchased mangas of all time. The story revolves around a high school student named Akira who learns that demons are planning to wipe out humanity. Akira merges with a demon named Amon, becoming Devil Man, and must fight to protect humanity from the demonic threat. This manga is very gruesome and just chock full of blood and gore and boobs. Lots of boobs. The real disturbing stuff comes from the demons and their transformations, usually changing the human body into grotesque abominations. This may seem on par with a lot of horror today, but imagine seeing this back in 1972. Shout out to the author Go Nagai, a true trailblazer in this kind of imagery. Gakao Gurashi. This is an interesting one. It follows a group of high school girls who live in their school as they survive through a zombie apocalypse. One of the interesting things about this manga is the character Yuki. Initially, she appears to be completely naive and unaware of the zombie outbreak. However, she's actually suffering from mental illness caused by the traumatic event of losing her friends and being trapped in the school during the outbreak. In order to cope with the trauma, Yuki has created a delusion in which everything is still normal and her friends are still alive. The other characters who are trying to survive and come to terms with the reality of the situation go along with Yuki's delusion in order to protect her. It creates an interesting dynamic between Yuki and the other characters, and it's interesting to see how Yuki comes up with some rationalization for everything being thrown into chaos. Parasite. Parasite originally released in 1988, but I actually only found out about it recently thanks to the body horror iceberg I did. Since then, it's become one of my favorites. It follows a teenage boy, Shinichi, who contracts a parasitic creature. The creatures climb into human ears and take control of the brain, and thus the entire body. Shinichi, however, has headphones in when the parasite attempts to crawl into his ear, and with limited time to survive, it crawls into his arm instead. This parasite, which Shinichi names Migi, can now only control his right arm, and this is how a strange relationship begins, as both need the other to survive. The parasite-controlled humans blend into society, but secretly must feed on people, causing widespread panic as more and more decimated corpses are found. The relationship between Migi and Shinichi is what makes the series great. Migi is so void of emotion, and and only thinks in a purely logical way without any specific moral guidelines other than survival. This often runs up against Shinichi's sense of basic morality and emotional impulses, which leads to some funny and disturbing moments. Shinichi and Migi also constantly run into other parasites, which they have to battle. The parasites have the ability to transform their bodies in any way they see fit, including turning into sharp objects, which is usually how they fight. Shinichi starts off with a disadvantage because only his arm can transform. However, eventually he and Migi begin to integrate more, and Shinichi himself develops superhuman strength, speed, and lightning-fast reflexes, making him much more formidable against the other monsters. Okay, okay, I've rambled too much on this one. What can I say? I really like it. Tier 2 Maha Sojo of the End, also known as Magical Girl Apocalypse, hits the ground running and never stops. The story begins with a high school student named Kogami as he narrates his boring life. Suddenly he sees a strange looking girl with a mallet show up and start massacring his entire class, and I mean tearing everybody apart in a truly gruesome manner. Everyone who's killed by the magical girl come back as zombie-like creatures with immense strength. Basically, the apocalypse has begun and Tokyo is thrown into chaos by these magical girls. From there, Kogami and a band of fellow students attempt to survive and navigate the magical girls who all have different abilities. I think what makes this one so disturbing isn't just the violence, which, don't get me wrong, some of the deaths are extremely brutal and creative, but the fact that you never know who will die. Sometimes you'll meet a new character that you assume will be around for the entire journey, only to see the get killed off two pages later. It's actually what makes it so exciting, especially in those first few chapters where it's just chaos, blood, and confusion. The story gets more complex as they learn more about these magical girls and their origin. Definitely a cool one to check out. Dead Man Wonderland Dead Man Wonderland is set in a futuristic Japan where a massive earthquake has destroyed most of Tokyo and created a new city which has been built around a privately owned prison called Dead Man Wonderland. 
It follows a teenage boy named Gonta who is a survivor of the earthquake and is falsely accused of murdering his entire class by a mysterious figure known as the Red Man. He's sentenced to death and sent to Dead Man Wonderland where he's forced to participate in a deadly game called the Carnival Corpse, which is a gladiator style battle where prisoners known as Dead Man fight to the death for the amusement of paying visitors. Each Dead Man has a special power known as a Branch of Sin, which is unique to each individual but typically involves the manipulation of their own blood. Ganta soon discovers that he has the power to control his own blood as well. Mermaid Saga. This is a weird one. Mermaid Saga is based around the idea that if you eat the flesh of a mermaid, you have a chance of becoming immortal, but on the flip side, you also have the chance of dying or being transformed into a deformed monster called a lost one. The story follows a young man named Yuta who is immortal and has lived for over 500 years. He's become tired of his immortality and is seeking a way to become mortal again. He encounters a young woman who recently ate mermaid flesh and has become immortal as well. Together they travel around encountering other immortal souls who share their stories from different eras. There's a lot of disturbing imagery in this one, especially for 1984, and it has a similar art style to Devilman. Battle Royal Battle Royal is set in a dystopian Japan where, as a result of an economic collapse, the government has adopted the Battle Royal Act which selects a class of high school students randomly and forces them to fight to the death on a deserted island. The purpose of this act is to intimidate the population into submission and reduce juvenile delinquency. The story follows the class selected to participate in the Battle Royal program as they're sent to the island, given weapons, and told they must kill each other until one person remains. The students are issued survival packs and a random weapon slash tool and sent out onto the island one by one. While most of the students receive guns and knives, some acquire relatively useless items like boom meringues, darts, or a fork. They have metal collars around their necks that will explode if they attempt to remove them or stay in any forbidden zones. They initially struggle with the idea of killing their friends and classmates, but as the game progresses, they become ruthless in their efforts to survive. The concept alone is pretty disturbing, but watching these underage kids devolve into madness, suffering horrible injuries and trauma, can at times be hard to stomach. A couple things worth noting. One is that there are obviously some striking similarities to the Hunger Games, and people have tried to say that Hunger Games ripped off the concept. I, I personally think it's just parallel thinking, especially since the settings are so different, but you can judge that for yourself. On another note, Battle Royal has one of the most well-received film adaptations of a manga, which I would definitely recommend. Quentin Tarantino also famously praised the film, saying it was the best film he'd seen in the past two decades, and stating that if there's any movie that's been made since I've been making movies that I wish I had made, it's that one. Damn, that's high praise. Blood on the Tracks Blood on the Tracks is disturbing in a completely different way. It dives into psychological horror and abusive relationships. It follows a young boy, Seiichi, as he navigates his home and social life. His mother's very overprotective and controlling to the point that it's actually scary, and there's a slew of dark family secrets that have traumatized Seiichi, who's suppressed a lot of these memories. I'm being kind of vague here because the story is great at slowly revealing shocking truths. I would recommend reading the first few chapters because it, it just keeps this constant intensity that makes you feel like something weird is going on and leads up to a really shocking moment that I don't want to spoil, but it, it just it sets up the whole thing very well. Humunculus. Humunculus is a psychological horror manga about a homeless man named Suzumu Nakoshi who volunteers to participate in a strange medical experiment for 700,000 yen. The experiment involves drilling a hole into his skull, which is supposed to tap into his sixth sense and develop a third eye, which grants him the ability to see people's innermost desires and fears. This manifests as what are called humunculus, where he sees the bodies of these people take strange and deformed shapes. He uses this new power to delve deeper into his own psyche and the people he encounters. The unsettling nature of the story comes from the exploration of the human psyche, as well as the grotesque imagery and violence that occurs throughout the manga. Just a side note, this process of drilling a hole in someone's head is called trepanation, and it was an actual medical practice at one point in history. I am a hero. I Am A Hero follows Hideo Suzuki, an unassuming 35-year-old manga artist. Hideo seems to have some mental health issues and hallucinates strange people in his apartment, which is really creepy. But his life takes a dark turn when a mysterious virus starts to spread in Tokyo, turning people into violent, zombie-like creatures. Yeah, this is another zombie manga, but I Am A Hero has a completely different feel than the others I've mentioned so far. It's much more realistic and avoids a lot of the typical manga tropes. The art style, the character interactions, and even how the people actually look like real people make this one stand out. 
It does have a bit of a slow start, but once the shit hits the fan, this one gets very dark very quickly. The infected people don't just act like shambling zombies you might see in a typical zombie movie. Their skin becomes all veiny and gross looking, and they contort their bodies in strange and unsettling ways. Hideo having to navigate these creatures while his psyche slowly breaks down makes this a very anxiety-inducing and disturbing read. Zekyo Gakyu this translates to screaming lessons. Every chapter tells a different horror story concerning a class of students. It's sort of an anthology series like Twilight Zone or Black Mirror, where a different story and threat is told every chapter. These stories are narrated by a ghost girl named Yomi, who bookends each chapter by both setting up and summarizing the lesson each chapter teaches. Also, Yomi is just a floating torso, which is a pretty cool reveal at the end of chapter one. Another. Another is a horror mystery manga that's set in a small town where a high school student named Koichi transfers to. He soon discovers that his class has a strange and eerie atmosphere and that his classmates seem to be hiding a dark secret. Koichi becomes especially interested in a weird girl named Mei who is always wearing an eye patch and appears to be ignored by everyone else in the class. So as the story progresses, Koichi begins to experience supernatural events and discover that a curse has been haunting his class for many years. Each year someone in the class dies under under mysterious circumstances, and their existence is erased from the memories of the other students and faculty. Koichi and Mei team up to investigate the curse and try to break it before it claims more victims. Along the way, there are some genuinely shocking twists and gnarly deaths. Gegege no Kitaro, also known as Kitaro of the Graveyard. This manga was released in the 60s and has had a significant cultural impact in Japan, with many of its characters and concepts becoming well known in Japanese society. It follows a young yokai boy named Kitaro. Kitaro is the last surviving member of his clan of yokai who was born with one eye. He has the ability to communicate with both humans and yokai and uses his powers to protect both groups from evil yokai who seek to harm them. Along with his father and a group of yokai friends, Kitaro travels throughout Japan to solve various supernatural mysteries and fight against malevolent yokai. Because it'll be relevant throughout this iceberg, I'll give a quick explanation of yokai. So, yokai are a big part of Japanese folklore. They're basically spirits, demons, or monsters that have various traits and appearances. Demon and monster kind of have a different meaning in Japan, or at least they lack the negative connotation because yokai aren't always necessarily evil. Sometimes they're just mischievous tricksters, and other times they're peaceful, like Kataro in this story. One thing I found fascinating is the lore that this manga builds. In the first issue, Kitaro's father explains that the world was once full of yokai and that humans came along and drove them into caves where they slowly starved. It's an interesting mythology and a cool start to the story. Speaking of Kitaro's father, he's one of my favorite characters because his mummy-like body withers away, but one of his eyeballs falls out and then grows its own little body. So he's just this little eyeball creature, usually hitching a ride on Kitaro. I love it. This one is definitely worth checking out, if anything, for how significant an influence it's had on Japanese horror. Tier 3 Let's start things off right with Frank and Fran. Basically, a mad scientist creates all sorts of abominations using dead bodies. His masterpiece, however, is Fran, a Frankenstein-like creation. The series follows Fran, who has taken over the mad doctor's house while he's away. Every chapter usually consists of Fran taking on some job concerning bringing a person back to life or altering someone's body in some way. You can see where the series becomes disturbing as we usually see these surgeries in gruesome detail and the results are almost always unpleasant. Despite the series featuring heavy gore and morbid themes, Fran is very lighthearted and this sets the upbeat tone of the manga. It's a great contrast and the series keeps you wondering how's Fran going to solve the issue in this chapter and is she ultimately going to make the people's lives worse along the way? Yeah, it's worth mentioning that Fran almost always messes up the operations in some way or alters people in unhelpful ways. For instance, in the first chapter, a man asks Fran to bring his dead son back from the dead. Secretly, he actually was the one who killed his son. Fran brings the son back to life as requested, however, she attaches him to the back of the father's head, making them share a body. The manga finds a great balance between body horror and morbid humor. Mirako-chan this one is just awesome. It follows a high school student, Miko, through her day-to-day -day life. The only thing is Miko begins to see things, really creepy things. Essentially, she starts seeing spirits in a similar fashion to the kid in Sixth Sense. What's great about this manga is that the drawing style on the dead is so uniquely disturbing, and at the same time, there's a lot of humor, especially in moments when Miko pretends she isn't seeing the spirits and tries to act normal. 
It's a great blend of horror and comedy. Eventually, Miriko starts embracing her powers more. There's a great moment when Miko and her friend are trying to find someone to adopt a stray cat, and when a nice charming man arrives to adopt it, Miko can see he's surrounded by the anguished souls of dead cats that he presumably killed. Next person to show up looks much rougher and less sociable than the first man, but is surrounded by the angels of cats who seem to love him. Miko gives him the cat and realizes you can't always judge a book by its cover. I recommend checking this one out. It really made me laugh. MDP Psycho. MDP Psycho follows Yosuke, a detective with multiple personality disorder, as he investigates gruesome crimes committed by serial killers in Tokyo. Yosuke has six distinct personalities that emerge at different times, and each personality has its own unique abilities and weaknesses. Despite his condition, he's a talented detective and is assigned to investigate a series of murders that involve the dismemberment of victims' bodies and the display of their body parts in public areas. It's a pretty interesting idea, and there is definitely some Hannibal vibes in the way the victims' bodies bodies are found mutilated in strange ritualistic ways. Hakaiju Hakaiju is pretty straightforward. A bunch of grotesque creatures show up and just start wrecking shit. There's a little bit of drama between the characters, but seriously, it's mostly just high school kids getting mutilated by creatures in graphic detail. Shiki Shiki's a horror mystery manga that takes place in a small rural village named Satoba, which is plagued by a mysterious epidemic of deaths that are occurring one after the other. As the deaths increase, a young doctor named Toshio Ozaki begins to investigate the cause of the deaths. As Toshio's investigation continues, he discovers that the epidemic of deaths is not caused by an ordinary disease, but rather by a group of vampires who have infiltrated the village. The story follows Toshio and a group of other villagers as they struggle to survive and defeat the vampires before they destroy the entire village. This manga manga is actually based off of a Japanese novel and is well regarded in the horror mystery genre. Mahou Sojo Site In the last video we covered Mahou Sojo The End, aka Magical Girl Apocalypse. Well, Mahou Sojo Site, or Magical Girl Site, is by the same author and takes place in the same universe sometime before the apocalypse. The story follows Aya, who's bullied at school and by her own older brother at home. One day a website appears on her computer screen and a really disturbing image of a girl begins speaking to her, telling her that she will grant her magic powers and send her a magic stick. Aya's magic stick looks kind of like a nerf revolver and holds the ability to teleport whoever she shoots, usually into death. For example, a group of bullies are harassing her in an alleyway and when she shoots them with her magic stick, they're teleported onto nearby train tracks where they're torn to pieces by the train. Pretty brutal. From there, Aya learns that there are many others who have acquired sticks through the site, including a girl who can freeze time and another who collects magic sticks by killing the owners. You can see where this escalates into a complex horror show. Like Magical Girl Apocalypse, this manga's chock full of brutal kills and disturbing moments, including the scene where a man shoots blood out of his ass. Sorry, but if I had to see it, so do you. Jogon. This one is... Well, there's no other way to say it. This shit is straight up bonkers. Jagon follows a police officer named Jagasaki who is fed up with his boring life and the lack of respect he gets. He often fantasizes of shooting up the people who give him a hard time with his gun. One day while on the train, a businessman suddenly transforms into a hideous beast using his massive tongue to cut people to pieces. Right before Jagasaki is also killed, his arm transforms into a gun-like monstrosity that blows the monster to bits. So let me try to explain what's going on here. One day, hundreds Hundreds of frogs begin pouring from the sky across the city. These frogs burrow into the bodies of individuals, transforming them into monsters that reflect their deep desires. These deformed humans are called fractured humans. Jagasaki is also a fractured human. His desire to shoot people has transformed his arm into a gun. Jagasaki has a talking owl as a sidekick that eats the frogs and poops out a dung ball. If he snorts these dung balls up his nose, he can stop himself from being completely transformed into a monster, so the objective is to kill all the fractured humans and collect like the dung balls from the owl so that he can survive. The problem is there are other half-fractured humans like Jagasaki who are employing the same tactics but with their own set of skills. I didn't make any of that up. That's actually the plot of this manga. It's insane. Pumpkin Knight. Pumpkin Knight follows yet another bullied high school girl who is seeking revenge against a group of bullies. She seeks out a girl who is rumored to have the power to make any wish come true. So she wishes for the power to kill her bullies, and the girl grants her wish by giving her a pumpkin mask that imbues her with incredible strength and agility. She then embarks on a brutal and bloody rampage against her former tormentors, stalking and killing them one by one with a variety of gruesome and inventive methods. I really like the imagery of the pumpkin head in this. It just gives off an 80s slasher movie 
movie vibe to me, and that's a plus. Sajiki Ona. Sajiki Ona follows the life of Hiroshi, a young man who moves into a new apartment to start a new life. However, he soon realizes that a strange woman in his apartment seems to be stalking him. Although this isn't as violent or gory as a lot of the entries on this list, the woman is really eerie and just gives me the creeps. Dissolving Classroom. This is another one by Junji Ito. Dissolving Classroom is pretty weird. It follows two siblings, a high school aged boy and his young sister. The manga is structured as a series of interconnected short stories, each focusing on a different victim of the siblings. The stories range from disturbing to outright surreal, with Ito's trademark body horror and bizarre imagery on full display. The main effect the twins have on people is dissolving their bodies, most notably their brains, but there is one chapter where they basically make a girl become hideously ugly and deformed. It's kind of vague as to what exactly is going on, other than the brother seems to have made a deal with a demon. Prison Lab Prison Lab is pretty gnarly. It follows a high school student who is bullied mercilessly every day. This bullying is orchestrated by one individual and the head bully, Aya, who thinks of Ayama as nothing but useless trash. Well, the tables turn when Ayama is offered to participate in a game. He can choose one person to be a hostage and keep them confined to a room for a month doing whatever he wants with them. Ayama uses this as his chance for revenge on his bully and enters Aya's name. There are other prisoners and captors who are part of the game as well. The captors, including Ayama, inflict horrible torture on their victims, with the only rule of the game being that you can't kill your hostage. Some of the horror besides the torture is how Ayama goes from the victim to the criminal so quickly, and worse than that, he becomes more and more sadistic as the days pass, determined to break the spirit of Aya. Doubt. Doubt is a manga series that revolves around a fictional cell phone game called Rabbit Doubt. In the game, the players are rabbits in a colony, and one of them is randomly chosen to act as a wolf infiltrating the group. Each round, the rabbits guess which one is the wolf, as the rabbits are eaten one by one until only the wolf is left. Yeah, so it's basically Among Us. In the story, four players of the game are knocked unconscious and awaken in an abandoned psychiatric hospital where they discover that they are playing a real-life game of Rabbit Doubt. To survive, the wolf, described as the liar, must die. The story progresses as the group tries to find the wolf and exit while they are brutally being killed off. The author actually has two other mangas that are sort of spiritual successors to Doubt called Judge and Secret, so I'd recommend reading all three. Jinrao Game Similar to Doubt, Jinrao Game, or Werewolf Game, has a group of people forced into a deadly game. Two of the participants are the wolves, while the rest are villagers who must vote on who they think the wolves are. You can't opt out of the game or you'll be killed, and the consequence of a villager being voted out is death, on top of the other brutal ways you could die by the wolves themselves, so things get very intense very quickly. Pupa Okay, this is easily the most disturbing on this tier. Pupa follows a pair of siblings, Utsutsu and Yume, who are heavily abused by their father as kids. One day they run into a mysterious woman who looks like a witch, and she warns them to leave before they see the red butterflies. Later, Yume sees red butterflies, and a cute little puppy comes out when it transforms into a grotesque monster. Shortly after, Yume becomes a monster as well, and lays waste to every nearby human. Her brother, Utsutsu, tries to comfort her, only to be eaten eaten by her. Well, it turns out that Yume has contracted a virus called pupa that transforms the infected into monsters who must eat flesh to survive. Her brother actually survived the attack because he was infected as well, but to a lesser degree, gaining regenerative abilities similar to that of Deadpool or Wolverine. Now, here's where it gets really weird. Because Yume must feed on flesh, Utsutsu allows her to eat him since he can regenerate, and it's just so weird, man. It, it just makes me feel all icky. Obviously, it's more complicated than just that. There's a secret organization keeping tabs on them and all that, but the sibling cannibal scenes are just... ugh. Tier 4. Lullabies from Hell Lullabies from Hell is a horror manga by Hideshi Hino who is known for body horror, this manga being no exception. It contains four horror stories. The first is a fictional biography of the author himself describing his childhood. In the story, his head is misshapen and he has an obsession with the grotesque, mutilating animals and often dreaming he's a ruler of demons in hell who commands them to attack and torture people. It's pretty sick stuff. Eventually, he grows up to become a manga artist and realizes he has the ability to kill people just by willing it so. The story ends with the author talking directly to the reader and wishing them dead. Man, that's pretty hardcore. 
The second story is about a couple who end up having a strange lizard-like baby that eventually thirsts for human blood. The third story is about a group of kids who take a train through a tunnel that seems to be filled with ghosts that later begin to stalk them. The final story is about a deformed man who's shunned by his village only to become more and more deformed and covered in boils. What can I say? Hideshi Hino just has his own style of drawing and horror that really stands out. If any of this sounds familiar, it might be because there have been several live-action adaptations of some of his stories, most notably in Hideshi Hino's Theater of Horror, which I actually covered way back in the J-Horror Iceberg. Anna Sachuin. Also known as Peephole, this is about a man who, after failing to hang himself, accidentally puts a small hole through the wall where he can see into his neighbor's apartment. His neighbor is beautiful and also happens to be a killer. She lures men back to her apartment where she slices them up with a box knife. The peeping Tom witnesses the whole thing. Eventually, she finds him looking through the hole and they form a kind of messed up relationship. She keeps killing and even begins murdering people randomly outside. But the dude is helplessly in love with her and he's afraid she'll kill him too, so it's a lot. Crime Zone Crime Zone takes place in a world where vampires are real and known about, although there hasn't been an attack in years. Shiro, a typical high school kid, decides to go out past dusk with a group of friends even though the adults have warned them not to. Turns out one of his classmates is a vampire and she absolutely devastates the group of kids, apart from Shiro. Lucky for Shiro, another classmate, Erika, seems to have powers of her own and makes quick work of the vampire. Erika has the ability to transform her arms into weapons, one of which is a beast-like mouth that straight up just chomps vampires. It's pretty brutal and pretty cool. Gaju. Gaju is about a group of people in a subway train that get attacked by a giant bear-like creature in armor that just starts eating everybody. That's literally the whole thing. It's just non-stop terror as these people run from the beast and try to escape or kill it. Kind of reminds me of Jaws or Cujo or something like that where there's just one singular beast that's on a rampage. Drifting Classroom. Drifting Classroom follows sixth grader Sho Takamatsu who gets into an argument with his mother before heading to school. Suddenly a tremor occurs and Sho's school is transported to a post-apocalyptic wasteland where they realize they've traveled through time. The adults descend into madness, and some students resort to delinquency, hoarding food and water, causing dissension, and spreading a deadly plague. However, Sho and his group of survivors band together to lead the children as a quasi-government. Nishi, a telepathic student, helps them communicate with Sho's mother in the past, who prepares objects to aid them in the future. In their fight for survival, they face many threats, including hostile megafauna, food and water shortages, and madness. Portis. Portis is about two high school students who stumble upon a mysterious video game that transports them to a nightmarish world where they're hunted by grotesque creatures. If you want to check this one out, it's a fairly quick read because there's only one volume. Mashira. Mashira is about a small village nestled in the mountains where a group of people must fight for their lives against the tribe of giant apes that have been attacking the village for generations. Jin, who survived an attack by these bees as a child, now returns as an adult and trains to become a skilled fighter, joining the battle against the apes. It's a pretty far out concept and there are some pretty bizarre twists along the way, not to mention the copious amounts of blood and gore the apes inflict on people. Monkey Peak. Monkey Peak is actually very similar to Mashira in that it's based around a group of people who are trapped in the mountains after a bus accident who are attacked by a group of apes. The apes look a lot different in this manga, almost more tribal and demonic looking, as well as their ability to use tools and weapons. Eden no Ori Eden no Ori, or Cage of Eden, is another survival horror manga. This time it's a group of students who are trapped on an island after a plane crash. The island is full of large, prehistoric style beasts that brutally begin killing off the humans. It reminds me of Skull Island or something, but anime style. The Friends Eater Classroom. Yeah, this is a weird one. Basically, a bunch of high school students are forced to participate in a game. The game is called Tomagui, which means gluttony in Japanese, and it involves a group of students drawing lots to determine which one of them will become the eater and which will become the eaten. The eater then has to hunt down and kill the eaten before they're allowed to escape the school grounds. It's pretty messed up. Killing Morph Killing Morph starts off with a bang. Madoka and her friends walk down a crowded street when suddenly a masked killer shows up and just lays waste to everyone in his path. Before killing Madoka, he's apprehended by the police, but Madoka begins seeing the killer everywhere. She's convinced these are just hallucinations. That is until more murders begin to happen. Basically, the killer, who is called M, has the ability of bilocation, meaning he can actually be in two places at once. So while he sits in his jail cell, he also continues ruthlessly killing his victims elsewhere 
elsewhere. It's a really cool idea, and I like the look of him, who seems like an amalgamation of several different 80 slasher villains. This one definitely has its twists and turns as Madoka faces off against him. The manga definitely grapples with the mind of serial killers, and every chapter actually ends with a quote from a real life killer. Pretty dark stuff. Higanjima. Higanjima is another vampire manga. The story follows Akira Miyamoto, a teenage boy who travels to a remote island called Higanjima to search for his missing older brother. However, upon arriving on the island, Akira and his friends discover that Higanjima is inhabited by vampires and other supernatural creatures. The group quickly realizes that they must fight for their survival as they are relentlessly hunted by the island's inhabitants. Shibuya Kingo this manga is literally about thousands of giant flying goldfish infesting a city and eating every human they come across. It's really weird. In the last video, I covered Junjo Ito's manga simply called Gyo, where sea creatures crawl out of the ocean on mechanical legs. Well, this is kind of like that, except it's more cartoonish and somehow more bizarre. I don't know what to say about this one. It, it, it's wacky, man. The Island of Giant Insects. The Island of Giant Insects is exactly what the title would suggest. It follows a group of high school students and their homeroom teacher who are stranded on an uninhabited island after their plane crashes. However, they soon discover that the island is inhabited by giant mutated insects that are highly aggressive and deadly. And I mean deadly, like ripping people apart and draining them of blood kind of deadly. The students must band together and use their wits to survive as they face numerous challenges and life-threatening situations. Along the way, they uncover secrets about the island and the bizarre experiments that led to the creation of the giant insects. 14. Okay, this is one of the most bizarre ones on the list, so let me just run through this. In the 22nd century, a weird Birdman hybrid named Chicken George pops up at a chicken factory where he learns everything about humanity and realizes that we're all screwed because some prophecy says the world will end when all the kids born that year turn 14. So Chicken George decides he's going to build a rocket to save all the animals and maybe some humans, but then he falls for some girl named Barbara and decides to stay on Earth instead. But then aliens show up and start raping humans to share their DNA. DNA, which, you know, isn't cool. So the aliens eventually realize there's no hope for human DNA and start instead stealing spiritual energy from Earth, which throws the whole planet out of balance, causing natural disasters and a massive decrease in population. And it just gets even more wacky from there. It's, it's one of the most what-the-fuck mangas I've seen since researching this iceberg. But I gotta say, Chicken George is pretty awesome. Hellstar Remina. Love to see some cosmic horror on this list, and from none other than Junji Ito. Hellstar Remina follows the discovery of a new planet named Remina that suddenly appears in the sky and is named after a young girl. The discovery brings fame and fortune to her father, a scientist who discovered the planet, and to Remina herself, who becomes a media sensation. However, things take a dark turn when it's revealed that Remina is not a planet, but a living organism that begins to devour other planets and stars, causing widespread destruction and panic. As the creature draws closer to Earth, people start to blame Remina herself for bringing the monster to their planet. The story follows Remina and her father as they try to survive in a world turned upside down by the appearance of the monstrous creature. They're chased by a crazed cult, a doomsday prepper, and even the military who see Remina as the only way to stop the monster. Private Punishment Game Private Punishment Game is one of the most brutal on this tier. Essentially, a group of students wake up in an unknown facility and are forced to participate in a series of messed up games that result in severe bodily harm or death. The games are put on by a mysterious figure in a demented bunny mask who explains the rules for each game. If you haven't noticed, it seems pretty heavily inspired by Saw. This one starts off bleak and only gets bleaker, with the students slowly being killed off in horrible ways. Just so you get an idea, one game has two students trapped in glass boxes, each with blades above them that are slowly lowering. The only way to survive is by pulling a lever that causes the other player's blades to lower faster. But if you pull the lever, acid sprays on you, so there's no easy way out of any of these. It's a pretty short read, and if you enjoy Saw, you'll probably get a kick out of it. Although, like I said, it's pretty heavy and definitely made me wince a few times. Karata Sagashi Asuka is a typical high school girl minding her own business when suddenly the ghost of a dead girl appears and asks her to look for her body. Yeah, that's how this one starts. So basically Asuka and a group of fellow students are stuck in a time loop where they have one day to find all of the dead girl's body parts hidden throughout the school. If they fail, then a figure simply called the Red Person appears and slaughters one of them before the time loop starts back over at the start of the day. It's a really cool premise and even got a live action adaptation. Labidors. Uh... Okay, um, well, this is a manga where a mysterious illness turns people into monsters. 
when they're sexually aroused. So Isamu is of course a horny high school student who learns to harness his horniness in order to turn his rock hard arm into a Hellboy style big boy. Well that's a sentence I never thought I'd utter. Anyway, it's obviously insane, but it is pretty comical, and I'd be lying if I said there wasn't some epic moments of Isamu fighting these mutated sex fiends off with his giant arm. It's worth a peek if you want a good laugh, but it's also pretty graphic and disturbing at some points. Tier 5. Children. Children is about a college kid who gets a summer job at a daycare in the mountains. It seems like a good gig, so he jumps on it. When he arrives, he finds that there are no adults, but instead a 14-year-old headmistress and some creepy-ass looking kids. Turns out that the young headmistress is a psycho who kills people and then feeds them to the children. She then forces the main character to get involved. It's pretty disturbing, mostly because the children assist in gathering and killing victims. But the cannibal element is definitely an unsettling cherry on top. Mercy Alago. Mercy Lago is a manga about a psychopath killer named Kuroko who, instead of being executed for crimes, is used by the government to kill other psychopaths. It's cool having a total psychopath as a protagonist, and she kicks ass in often brutal ways. She also is constantly banging chicks throughout the series. I mean, the opening sequence of this manga is her scissoring a girl, which caught me off guard for sure. But yeah, she's basically got all the macho qualities of a badass action hero and the mentally disturbed tendencies of a villain. Speaking of the villains, the opponents she's faced with are pretty creative. The first bout we see her engaged in is with a roided up pro wrestler who takes it too far and kills his opponent in the ring before going on a rampage. Zombia Reiko, or in English, Reiko the Zombie Shop, is about a high school necromancer, Reiko, who collects a fee for reanimating the dead, usually to understand how they died, making her a sort of undead detective. In the first volume, she mostly deals with a series of unconnected cases, like a mother who wants to know why her teenage daughter killed herself. Turns out that the daughter had been molested by her father, driving her to suicide. When she's brought back to life, she explains this before her zombie corpse rips her father's head off. It gets even more twisted because before Reiko leaves, the mother has one more request. She has Reiko reanimate the head of the dead husband simply so that she can torture him. You can see how dark this manga can get. It really seems to relish in it too. A lot of the chapter covers show Reiko in some typically offensive fashion, like wearing a Nazi uniform or using a crucified Jesus as a slingshot. Totally unrelated to the manga, but so weird. And gives you an idea that the author doesn't care about pushing boundaries. And this is displayed in some very gruesome acts of violence and gore throughout it. Dolly Kill Kill. This is a bizarre one that kind of reminds me of Magic Girl Apocalypse. One day, giant dolls fall from the sky and begin wiping out all of humanity using a mix of their own various weapons and flying bugs that straight up cause people's bodies to dissolve. Well, high school student Aruma witnesses his friends and crush get demolished by this initial attack. Fast forward one year later and Aruma has managed to survive living in the new apocalypse. He ends up meeting and joining forces with Yu, a teenage girl who wants to eradicate the dolls with her group of comrades. It's pretty wacky and off-putting at times, like the fact that one of the doll types is a pregnant doll, which is just weird. Versus Earth. Another weird apocalypse manga, Versus Earth is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, Earth sends these giant black pillars up to the surface that have eyeballs, and they just obliterate all the humans in sight, trying to exterminate all of humanity. There's a group of humans, however, who found a way to fight the pillars and destroy them. It's a really insane concept right from the get-go. Noah of the Blood Sea. I had no idea what to expect with a title like that. But basically, Noah and the Sea of Blood follows a group of people who mysteriously get free tickets to a cruise ship. They soon discover that most of the other guests got the tickets by chance as well. Soon, people begin disappearing and acting strange. We learn that there's a second group of high-class people that seem to be watching the guests, and there's a strange little girl named Noah. The manga does a great job of setting up the tone with the opening scene showing a human being served on a platter at a table where the guests cut off her ears and eat them, as well as stick steel straws in her body, filling their glasses with blood. Okay, spoiler alert here, although this is revealed only a couple of chapters in, so it's not a major twist, and it's somewhat predictable. These are vampires on the ship, and the guests have all been invited in order to be picked off and feasted upon. The idea of being trapped on a ship with vampires is pretty scary because there's really nowhere to escape to. Echo Echo Azaraku. This manga follows a teenage girl who's actually a young witch practicing black magic. Her soul was sold to a demon as a baby, and now she dabbles in the dark arts. 
Usually each chapter follows the witch as she transfers to a new school and uses her black magic in order to enact a sick sense of justice. In this way, she kind of acts as an anti-hero, using her magic against bad people, but often disregarding innocent people in the process. This is one of those mangas that's a little older, originally running in the 70s, but it's actually gotten both an animated adaption and several film adaptions. Human Ranch Human Ranch is as disturbing as it sounds. Basically, elves buy humans from the government to bring to their world where they raise them in a ranch like cattle to eat. There's an interesting ranking system within the ranch where you can avoid being sent to the chopping block by raising the ranks, but this usually requires selling out other humans in order to win points with the elves. The manga mostly follows a group of students who attempt to escape the ranch and withstand the horrors within, whether by the elves or other humans. The Red Snake in the last video, we talked about Hideshi Hino, who stands out in the world of Japanese horror because of his unique art style and truly bleak sense of storytelling. I put him right up there with Junji Ito as far as being prolific in the genre. Well, The Red Snake is another one of Hino's works and might even be more bizarre than his other mangas we've covered. It follows a young boy who lives in a house in the woods. He tries to escape the house into the woods, but always ends up back at his front door. The house is strange and mysterious with long dark hallways and a large mirror. His grandpa warns him not to look into the mirror or the devil will snatch him and take him to a world worse than hell itself. So let's get into his family. His father keeps chickens and when they don't lay eggs, he chops off their heads and then feeds them to the other chickens. Speaking of chickens, his grandma actually believes she's a chicken and lives in a giant nest in a room where she squawks at everyone believing them to be stealing her eggs. It's so wacky, dude. His sister's obsessed with bugs and creepy crawlies, letting them crawl all over her. I mentioned the grandpa already, but I didn't mention that he has a massive lump hanging off of his face, and he has the boy's mother rub eggs on it and squeeze the bloody pus out of it. Yeah, sorry if you were eating. That's so gross, man. Well, the shit hits the fan when one day a red snake appears and starts sucking the blood from his sister. From this point on, basically everyone goes insane. The grandpa gets his leg cut off by the sister, the grandma hatches out of a huge egg as an actual giant chicken, the mom's face is burnt off by acidic pus that shoots out of the grandpa's new leg lump. Eventually, the kid tries to escape the chaos and runs into the mirror world that turns into a literal hellscape with demonic, grotesque creatures trying to kill him. I'd recommend it. It's a good read. Paranoia Star So, Paranoia Star is a manga by Suhiro Maruo, who is widely known for creating Sojo Tsubaki, a.k.a. Midori, which is known as being one of the most shocking and disturbing mangas ever made. But we'll get to that later. Paranoia Star is one of the most batshit crazy things I've ever read, and honestly, more than anything on this iceberg so far, is the most I've ever asked myself, what the fuck am I reading? It's a collection of short stories, I guess you could call them all that, that seem to be themed around bizarre mental states. The first couple stories are the most cohesive. One follows a teenage boy who becomes obsessed with technology and suddenly his body is completely engulfed by the tape of a cassette, turning him into a strange abomination. It really reminds me of Tetsuo the Iron Man, not just in concept, but in the psychotic tone. The next story is a man who turns into an ant in a slow and graphic process. The last story seems to just showcase the horrors of World War II, loosely following a soldier and the horrible acts he participates in. There's one scene that just shows Japanese soldiers attacking a family by brutally raping the boy's mother in front of him before one of the soldiers picks the boy up by his feet and swings him into a wall while his head explodes. I know this all sounds completely chaotic, and I'm doing my best to find the actual story in this thing. It's basically a series of horrible and violent acts strung together as if by someone with a severe mental illness. The worst part about this? The art is actually stellar. I would say visually, this manga is very impressive and almost feels like something you would see in some kind of modern art exhibit. It straight up assaults your visual sense and I couldn't stop reading simply because the artwork and bizarre language kept going from one what the fuck to the next. It's certainly not for everybody. If you're a fan of horror manga and have a strong stomach, check it out if anything for the novelty, but I will warn you, it's extremely graphic and there are actually a lot of real life images in this manga. A lot of them are from vintage horror movies like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, but there are some images that seem like they could be real pictures of dead bodies, so I'm not even sure if I can show this on YouTube. So yeah, if you want a real mindfuck, check out Paranoia Star. U12. 
Ah, okay, the premise of U-12 is that a group of underage girls is trapped in a prison full of pedophiles and they're slowly released, causing the girls to fight for survival and escape as pedos with varying degrees of mental illness and different abilities attempt to, well, you know. Let's, uh, let's just move on to Tier 6. Tier 6, Freak Island. Freak Island is often called an inspired mix between The Hills Have Eyes and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A group of students become stranded on an island with a giant suited killer in a pig mask. As the story progresses, we learn that there's something darker going on with this island, which is full of severely deformed people. The pig mask killer belongs to a family of deformed cannibals. It does seem that the family is inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre, especially the mass killer I mentioned earlier, who seems to be directly influenced by Leatherface. The family have some sort of regenerative powers that come from a demonic entity that they worship known as Santa Maria, who is essentially the satanic version of Saint Mary. It becomes more and more complicated after this, with more backstory given to the family and a lot of the survivor characters either being killed or transformed, or both. The Yakuza have ties to the island, and at one point the Vatican shows up. It's really insane. But that's what people seem to like about it. It's straight up bonkers. It's also extremely graphic with some really unique and uncomfortable kills and injuries. With brains, guts, dismemberment, you know, all the good stuff. Mantis Woman. This is a sort of anthology manga featuring various horror stories. The first story is of course Mantis Woman, about a creepy ass woman who has blade arms like a praying mantis, which she uses to cut off people's heads. It's weirder than that actually, she collects the heads and then sews masks onto the faces and turns them into strange little doll creatures. Creepy. There's several more stories including one about a small snake boy hybrid that kills people, a cult like family a gumball machine that's filled with body parts that are put together to form a killer creature, and my personal favorite is called Koala is Watching, which kind of seems like a joke, but a little koala bear doll starts trying to stalk and kill people. What's weird is that it's implied that some small human is simply inside of the doll, but the proportions don't even really make sense. Like, you just see a giant hand come out of its mouth or a foot come out the other way, but they kind of look like full-sized uh, body parts. It's still pretty freaky when you realize there's something inside the koala, though. Dead Tube. Dead Tube has a lot of twists and turns, especially in the first few chapters, but let me give you a general idea. Dead Tube is a website where users upload videos of brutal acts and compete for views with the promise of vast amounts of money. The catch is that the person with the lowest amount of views will be held accountable for all the crimes committed in all of the videos on Dead Tube, even if they did not commit them. The protagonist, Tomohiro, is introduced to the website by Mai, who ropes him into filming her as she lures a man into an abandoned factory and brutally murders him. Dead Tube provides funding for the user's films, and the one with the highest views will be rewarded 10 million yen. Tomohiro slowly coming to the realization that the people around him are all playing this sick game is horrifying, and the fact that the contestants don't care at all about the heinous acts they commit or are committed on them is so disturbing. Needless to say, this one is highly graphic and only escalates as the series goes on and the contestants try to get more and more views. Yakudo Sojo. Yakuto Sojo, which translates to Burn Girl, is about a girl who's obsessed with death and fixates on eventually killing herself. She meets a boy who finds this fascinating, and they develop a very unhealthy and disturbing relationship where we learn more and more about the girl, including the fact that she kills and tortures small animals. She eventually decides that the duo will die together. So the manga essentially follows the twisted relationship, and honestly, it's not as bloody and gory as some of the other entries on here, but it might be the most depressing so far. Hell Baby. Speaking of depressing, let's talk about another Hideshi Hino classic, Hell Baby. Hell Baby starts with a woman giving birth to a set of twin girls. One, an ordinary beautiful baby girl, while the other is a horribly disfigured baby, and worse than that, she seems to have a taste for blood. After the father of the twins comes to this realization, he asks the doctor to keep quiet about the whole ordeal and to make up a story about losing one of the children during birth. In reality, they put the deformed child in a garbage bag and throw her in a dump where she eventually dies. However, her corpse is struck by lightning bringing her back to life. From there, she spends years in the junkyard killing and eating nearby animals to survive. Eventually, a mysterious voice speaks to her and tells her to venture into the city and find her sister. I don't want to spoil what happens when she does find her, but I'll say this. As disturbing as this manga is, it actually really tugs on your heartstrings, and I was not expecting it to be so emotionally effective. I highly recommend it. Ogre Slayer Ogre Slayer is about a young man who hunts ogres. The young man was born of an ogre's corpse, making him pure ogre blood. Though he was born like an ogre, he has the appearance of a human. Instead of being born with horns like traditional Japanese ogres, he was born with a sword. 
Besides the typical blood and gore you'd expect from a manga like this, there is an added disturbing element which is that the demons can latch into a woman's womb like a parasite, which is how they reproduce. Saitama Chainsaw Sojo this manga is about Fumio, an ordinary high school student who loves reading manga and spending time with her boyfriend, Takumi. However, her life takes a turn for the worse when she finds Takumi cheating on her with a new transfer student. This sends her into a depressed spiral, and finally she decides to use her family's chainsaw to kill Takumi and herself at school the next day. Pretty dark premise, I gotta say. Cambrian Oh boy. Um, okay, so this one starts with Keiko, a scientist who's working at a research institute. She receives an unexpected call from a former colleague who attempted human cloning a year prior. After accepting his invitation to meet, Keiko is taken aback when she discovers that the professor has become a young man and his newfound youth is attributed to the Cambrian factor. As it turns out, the professor's goal is to replicate the Cambrian explosion, a remarkable evolutionary leap, using modern humanity, with the intention of becoming their creator and ruling over the world. The thing is, the way the Cambrian evolution is spread is by sex. So yeah, this one quickly devolves essentially into a tentacle hentai, but with added sci-fi body horror because once someone is infected, they transform in just really bizarre, brutal ways. It kind of reminds me of the thing. Bloody Maiden. Bloody Maiden has a lot of similar qualities to some of the other mangas I've covered, mainly the idea that a group of students become trapped on an island and start getting killed off. This one does have a heavy emphasis on fan service though, as all the students are women. Cradle of Monsters. Cradle of Monsters follows a group of Japanese high school students who embark on a cruise ship named the Ocean's Cradle as part of a class trip. However, things take a dark turn when they suddenly capsize and end up floating upside down. The students soon discover that they're not alone on the ship as they come face to face with a crazed individual armed with a fire axe. As chaos and panic ensue, the teacher attempts to fight off the attacker but ends up getting bitten and infected by him. The attacker is revealed to be no ordinary human but a zombie, and soon other infected individuals begin to attack and kill the remaining passengers. Amid the mayhem, two groups of Japanese high school students manage to survive, one consisting of the main characters and the other group of violent juvenile delinquents. Additionally, a small group of American construction workers and a stewardess also survive the initial attack and must fight their way through the zombies to reach the bottom, now top, of the ship. Yakuza Girl The manga Yakuza Girl takes place in modern day Japan where the protagonist, Fumihiro, enrolls at a prestigious academy to fulfill his grandmother's dying wish. Unbeknownst to Fumihiro, the school is not what it seems as every student and teacher possesses supernatural powers and are divided into clans that brutally compete with each other by killing killing members of enemy clans. Fumihiro receives unexpected help from Akari, a girl whom he proposed to upon first sight. Ingoshima. Okay, this might be the most jarring so far, and I honestly regret reading some of it. It starts off as an island survival horror and quickly turns into some of the most fucked up smut to defile my eyeballs. So it starts off a high school class is going on a boat trip or whatever, when of course the boat capsizes and they all wash up on an island. Turns out the island is full of natives who basically want to kill and have sex with everyone. So I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be some kind of Green Inferno or Cannibal Holocaust type thing, but it's so much worse. There's this gross old queen who has the male survivors all tied up nude and starts kissing them and grabbing their junk. Meanwhile, the ladies are all tied up, and after they take a selected few of them, the tribesmen just go to town. I pretty much noped out at this point because it's so hypersexualized, and considering it's brutal gang rape, it just devolved into what appears to be a fetish manga. As far as I understand, it gets much, much worse, including huge loincloth wearing tribe members who want to literally eat the men's asses, and people getting their wings chopped off and stuff. Like I said, I regret reading the parts of it that I did, and I think there's like hundreds of chapters of this manga, so for whatever reason it had legs and kept going. Tier 7. Jinmen. Jinmen might be one of my favorite finds while doing this iceberg because it's genuinely creepy. Masato is a high school student who used to spend all his time at his hometown zoo and is returning after seven years to visit. Since he last visited the zoo, something seems off. He meets up with his old zookeeper pal who tells him that there's been a change in zoo directors and that the animals have been acting weird lately. The next day he plans on meeting his childhood friend at the zoo. They get there early and sneak in, but there are no animals or staff around. Suddenly, shit hits the fan when they witness a security guard being eaten alive by hyenas. This is when things get weird. It appears the animals now have human faces and are trying to kill all humans. It's a pretty crazy premise, but the art style on the animals is really well done and unsettling. Definitely recommend this one. Kyosei Tensei 
Kyosei Tensei is about Anazaki, a genius teenager whose girlfriend Yuno was assaulted by 15 men and then killed. Anazaki murders all 15 of the culprits for revenge and then is executed for his crimes. Something that he's fine with because he just wants to see Yuna again in the afterlife. However, he wakes up in a parallel dimension where an extreme solar flare has warped the minds of all men, turning them into zombie-like beasts who simply mimic their old behaviors and try and sexually assault, murder, and then eat any woman they come across. Anazaki runs into a group of surviving teenage girls from his high school when he realizes that Yuna may still be alive somewhere in this alternate world, and so the story begins. It definitely doesn't hold back on the violence with some brutal deaths throughout. Okatenomaru. This has to have one of the most batshit crazy openings to any comic on this list. A man's head suddenly transforms into a giraffe's head and begins biting and eating people while dragging their corpses around. I mean, what the hell? As far as I can tell, this is caused by some parasite, and of course the main character, a normal high school student, gains the ability to harness and utilize this transformative power. Or something. Inigami Hakase. Inugami Hukase, or Inugami Expert, is another one by our old buddy Maruo Suhiro, who is, if you remember, the author of Paranoia Star and Sojo Subaki. It follows a high school boy who discovers a dark secret. His school crush was being taken advantage of by their teacher, and once the teacher found out that she was pregnant, pushed her out of the school window to her death. The boy, seeking revenge, decides he'll use the power of an Inugami, which is a dog spirit, in order to enact revenge on the teacher. He chops off the head of a dog and begins practicing the rituals with a voodoo-like doll, focusing curses on the teacher. Unfortunately, the teacher gets wise and follows the boy to his secret shrine. Here, he discovers what the boy is up to and buries him from the neck down, starving him to the point where he'll eat anything, so the teacher feeds him a maggot-infested rat to eat. Ugh. Eventually, the boy's body is actually possessed by the Inugami, and he rips the teacher into pieces. Rad. Ugyaku no Kakeko. So, the English name for this manga is Attack on Cox Cluck Cluck, which tells you all you need to know. The premise is that one day adults start turning into giant chickens and eating the brains of teens and children. So the MC, who volunteers at the local orphanage, must protect the orphans from these monsters. It's insane, but in a really fun way. I will say the initial moment we see someone transform is very disturbing. The principal suddenly rips his clothes off, runs up to a lady, and bites her boob off. It's just so sudden and hard to look at. Then of course his face explodes, revealing the chicken head underneath. Yeah, this is the type of manga that I started this iceberg for. Yajin. Yajin follows a young teen, Onda, who has the ability to see ghosts. Despite being able to see ghosts around, she can't touch them and thus lives in misery, especially since there's a ghost that won't stop talking at the foot of her bed. Meanwhile, two of her classmates, Utsugi and Takajou, find out that they have the ability to leave their bodies and float around as spirits. And while in this form, they can actually interact with both ghosts and humans. The three team up after they're able to expel the ghost from Onda's room. It's a cool twist on the girl sees ghost genre and has a good sense of humor as well. The Outer Zone. The Outer Zone is clearly inspired by the Twilight Zone, with every chapter telling a different tale of people in strange and horrific encounters. This is all narrated by a mysterious elf woman who guides you through the chapters. Keiko and the False Detective. Satoru is a brilliant young detective sought after by the police for his remarkable reasoning skills. However, he has a secret ability, the ability to see and communicate with the spirits of the deceased. These restless spirits provide him with crucial hints and insights that aid him in solving complex cases. He encounters a peculiar ghost named Keiko who boldly declares herself to be a god. Intrigued and curious, Satoru becomes entangled in a series of enigmatic cases orchestrated by Keiko. It's essentially a buddy cop manga if one of the buddies was a ghost girl. Kinda cool. Emerging. Emerging is essentially about a deadly pathogen that starts spreading throughout Japan, starting with one man whose eyes begin to bleed before he basically explodes in the street. Gnarly. Fukuju Toshi. This is another one of those suddenly everyone starts getting killed by something weird kind of stories. It revolves around Kyo, a high school kid hanging out with his friends in Tokyo. He loses a bet and is forced to wear a tacky shirt with an old anime character on it, when suddenly they stumble upon the site of a massacre. And the culprit? Clothing. 
Yeah, so basically people's clothes start morphing into giant monster mouths that eat humans. So Kyo and one of his only surviving friends, Moata, attempt to escape the madness. The premise of killer clothing works well for fan service because Moata must remove her clothes early on in order to avoid being possessed by them, and it actually made me laugh because of how absurd the whole thing is. It gets even weirder when Kyo is completely surrounded by the monsters and suddenly transforms into a kaiju-sized clothing monster that just wrecks everybody before turning back into human form, where the anime character on his t-shirt begins talking to him. So, yeah, that's the basic setup. Despite having a crazy premise, there are a few elements here that make it interesting. Continue to be killed summer. Yeah, the English title doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. It follows two friends who are walking home one night when suddenly a businessman without a face kills them both. They awake the next morning, assuming it was a bad dream, until the man shows up and kills them yet again. They realize every day they wake up is actually the same, and from there they attempt to solve the mystery of the no-faced man while avoiding being killed. It's not the most original premise. The movie Happy Death Day comes to mind here, but I'm not sure which came first. Anamorphosis no Meiju. Well... I really didn't think we'd reach this level of depravity until the final two tiers, but here we are. Anamorphosis is what is known as eroguro. Eroguro being short for eroticism, and guro comes from the word grotesque, even though it's often confused for meaning gore. This manga is pretty weird because half of it is one singular story that isn't even that gory compared to the second half of the book, which is just full-on Iroguro. So the first half is about a rich dude who basically holds a contest where he recreates the scenes of horrible crimes and summons the ghosts of the dead. Then he has a group of people see how long they can last staying on the recreated set he's built. In this particular scene, a man dies while on the set of a kaiju movie when a gunpowder rig goes wrong and blows off half the dude's face. So the people are on the miniature set and the ghost of the dude in the kaiju suit appears and kills them in gruesome ways. It's a pretty elaborate setup and gets a little confusing by the end. But at one point, the people shrink down for some reason and have to escape the ghost as if he's an actual kaiju, which is kind of cool. Now, let's just briefly go over the more depraved second half of this manga because it is truly bizarre. Each chapter is a different, unconnected story that features horrible things happening. In one story, a girl proclaims herself a rainy girl. For whatever reason, wherever she goes, it begins raining. Well, she eventually is kidnapped by a mad scientist who has found several rain people and begins forcing them to breed so that they can ship the rain babies to other countries forcing heavy rain to drown them out. It's, it's just straight up bonkers, dude. Well, so the rain girl is forced to have babies, which for whatever reason it shows in graphic detail. Speaking of babies, another story is about a couple whose neighbor keeps coming over to offer them leftovers. Eventually, the police show up and inform them that the neighbor was kidnapping children, chopping them up, and making food out of them, which is what she was bringing over to the couple. Pretty disgusting. Another story that feels like Junji Ito on crack and Blue Chew features a high school girl who tries to get some students to come back to school after they become shut-ins. They're portrayed as huge, disgusting blobs that fill the rooms and buildings that they're in. At one point, a student who is overflowing out of his house tells his crush that he likes her. The crush is also a mass blob and neighbor who feels the same way. And so the giant blobs begin to... I mean, what the hell am I reading? All the stories are like this, just really grotesque, bizarre scenarios. I I've had enough with this one. Let's move on. 17 Psy. So, 17 Sai is sort of notorious as it's a manga based on the real-life case of Junko Furuta, which may be familiar to some of you, but just a brief summary. Junko was a beloved high school student who was kidnapped by a group of teen boys and subsequently raped, tortured, and eventually killed. In the realm of true crime, this is a particularly rough one, so it's become somewhat popular to cover. And along with its popularity has come some questionable media inspired by it, which leads us to 17 Psy. In some areas, it's directly taking from the Junko case, but in other ways, it's very different. Like, a large part of this manga is the fact that the kidnapped girl has a twin sister that is desperately trying to find her, whereas Junko had no twin. Where it really takes from the real-life story is the way the girl's treated. She's confined to a room where she's taken advantage of by multiple men, beaten, and starved. One particular scene shows the girl being burned with lighter fluid, which of course happened in the real life case, and is pretty brutal. You get the idea at this point, and I think it's worth noting that this manga is pretty controversial for obvious reasons. A lot of people think it's messed up for the author to make entertainment out of a horrifying life event. One of the differences between the story and real life is that in the comic, the girl actually survives the events, whereas Junko did not. Which, you could make the argument that the author was trying to tell an alternate story that had a happy ending. I haven't seen any interviews with the author, so who knows, he could be a real dirtbag for all I know, but it just brings up the age-old question of, where's the line? 
For instance, if it's immoral to make entertainment based off of real-life victims of horrible crimes, then Law & Order Special Victims Unit is a horrible offender, and it's one of the most popular shows on TV. It's an interesting thing to think about, but anyway, I've gotten way off course here. Let's move on. Tier 8. Sojo Kaitai. Sojo Kaitai, which translates to something like Dismantled Girl, is a collection of gory short stories with each chapter telling a different scary story, such as one where a girl begins hearing the strange cries of a baby at night. Eventually, she realizes the cries are coming from her own belly, and she decides she's going to get rid of it when suddenly the cries begin to form words, Don't kill me. And the fetus begins to claw its way out of her stomach, followed by dozens more. So weird. In another story, a girl sent to live with her creepy relatives. At dinner, she served a strange meat that almost looks like a face. She later helps her cousin change her bandage when she finds a face-like tumor growing on her cousin's head. The cousin demands that she slice it off of her head, and we find out that this is what she'd been eating for dinner that night. Gross. Her other cousin also happens to enjoy cutting himself, and the rest of the family drink his blood. There's a few other stories in the same vein, but you get the gist. Tokyo Red Hood Tokyo Red Hood is some real Aroguro trash. It's a very weird plot that seems to just serve as an attempt to justify the very fucked up acts we see. But basically, Little Red Hood is a girl who also happens to be a psychopath murderer and cannibal. Oh, and I forgot to mention she's immortal, so we often see her body torn apart in various ways. But the real reason this manga has such a dark reputation is that Red Hood is an 11-year-old girl, and she seems to not be able to help herself from having sex with grown men, usually before killing them. It's pretty dark because of this aspect and makes the whole thing seem beyond fucked up to read so I quickly noped out of this one if I'm being honest. Sojo Pandora Sojo Pandora is a horror anthology with four chapters. In the first chapter, a girl is brought back to life by a demon with a new body that she uses to kill off her bullies for revenge. The second story is about a maid who's hired to stay at a mansion with an old doctor. Turns out he has a human doll as a daughter who's stitched together like Frankenstein, and they begin to try to kill the maid because the doll likes her face and wants to use it. The third story is about a group of students staying by a lake when they're attacked by fish-like humanoids. And the final story is the most gory as a human-sized puppet girl begins killing people and mutilating their corpses, pulling their chests open and dismembering them. Akai Hon. Akai Hon is another anthology horror manga. A group of people are gathered around telling ghost stories, and each chapter tells a different tale. It's a little hit and miss, but there are some frightening moments. One story is about an adult actress who shows up to set, and there's something weird about her. When they review the footage, her face is all messed up, and then she starts appearing in other films after the fact, but in the background. There's a great story where a woman's body starts slowly retracting into itself, and it's really unsettling. So you get the idea. The stories all vary, but the running theme throughout is there's a very particular style used on the ghost faces, which is pretty freaky. Gift plus minus. This is one where the English translation that I read wasn't great, but as far as I understand, the story follows a high school girl who kidnaps criminals or otherwise morally corrupt individuals in order to harvest their organs, which are donated to hospitals. Pretty cool premise, I gotta say. Iron Ghost no Sojo. This is a pretty unique idea. Essentially, it follows a high school girl who has the ability using a satanic ritual to transfer her soul into a strange battle doll that she calls an iron ghost and uses to kick ass, encountering cultists, murderers, and psychopaths. It isn't long before she finds others who use the same technique to transfer their souls into dolls with their own unique abilities. And there you have it. Satanister, or Satanister? Anyway, it's by the same author as Iron Ghost and is just straight up bonkers. It starts when a group of people online who all want to die decide they're going to meet up and do it together. One of the members of the group, Valkyrie, shows up and secretly drugs them. They all wake up in the woods wearing bunny outfits. Turns out, Valkyrie is a straight-up killer psycho who dresses people up this way just to hunt and kill them. She tells them that if anyone can escape her, they'll be given a gift that money can't even buy. After losing most of her limbs, one of the bunnies does manage to escape and then realizes what the prize is. After fighting to escape death, she realizes now that she wants to live. It's a pretty cool idea and an interesting way for Valkyrie to justify the killing since the people were planning on dying anyway. Things get even weirder when we find out that Valkyrie is doing all of this in preparation for an upcoming tournament where psycho killers like her from all around the world are going to battle each other. Killer Shark in Another World Killer Shark in Another World is just hilarious. It follows a young mage in training who attempts to summon a familiar into her world, but it goes wrong when she accidentally summons a giant killer shark that goes on a rampage. It seems to have the power to change size at will, and it can swim on land 
somehow. The shark is cute and friendly towards the mage, but it just fucks everyone else up who comes in contact with it. So it's just one crazy situation into the next and pretty funny, I gotta say. Kaze no Matenro. Kaze no Matenro is about a mysterious middle school kid with a scar across his eye that transfers from school to school battling monsters, ghosts, and demons. It's actually really cool and pulls a lot from classic monster movies. For instance, the monster in the first issue looks just like Nosferatu from the classic 20s horror film. It's worth checking out. Sojo Tsubaki. Honestly, I probably should have had this one on an earlier tier because of how widely known it is, but Sojo Tsubaki, aka Midori, is a manga and anime film that's regarded by many as one of the most disturbing mangas ever made and has been banned in many countries. But let's just dive into the story. Midori is a young girl whose parents die. Now that her parents are dead, she has no place to go and ends up staying with a circus troupe. Most of the manga after this follows Midori being both physically and sexually abused by the circus performers. The fact that she's an underage girl makes a lot of this particular particularly messed up, and it's not a shock as to why this was banned so heavily. Midori is just ridiculed and degraded and straight up raped. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Eventually, a magician arrives at the circus, and it turns out that the dude has actual magical powers. He ends up falling in love with Midori and marrying her. There's a lot of creepy stuff here because they're like smooching and making out and stuff, and keep in mind that Midori is 12 years old, so yuck. Besides the gross pedo stuff, there's a ton of gore in this film. There's just a lot of detailed body horror kind of stuff and graphic imagery. One part just straight up shows the magician killing a ton of people in grotesque ways by having their bodies deformed and exploding. This scene includes showing kids die, just so you know. Probably the most disturbing scene is when Midori finds some adorable loving puppies and one of the circus performers picks one up, smashes it into the ground, and then stomps on it so that its guts and brains explode out of its body. Later that night they eat stew and she reveals that its dog meat from the puppy she killed. Of course, this is after everyone eats it, including Midori. It's altogether just really strange and violent. I can't even really get into all the story details because it gets to the point where it's sort of hard to follow. It's one of those mangas where people have different interpretations of it and even theories as to what it all means, especially regarding the confusing ending. A lot of the reviews I've seen tend to criticize it for just being needless exploitation and there isn't much of a plot or story to follow, while others defend it as a work of art, but I don't know, you can be the judge I guess. Ichi the Killer. Oh boy, Ichi the Killer's a real doozy. Not in a bad way, but just in a really messed up way. It follows Ichi, a young man who's manipulated by his uncle, a gang member, into killing people. As Ichi cuts people into bits with his dope-ass metal boots, there is a Yakuza member named Kakihara who's attempting to track him down. That's the basic idea, and we'll get back to some more story elements in a second, but let's take a moment to cover some of the insane violence in this manga. I already mentioned that Ichi has a tendency to go psycho and slice people into pieces, including one great sequence where he slices a guy's face off but Ichi's form of violence is more straightforward. Kakihara is a straight up sadist who tortures and injures people in horribly brutal ways that are just hard to look at. At one point he has a man naked and suspended in the air by hooks and he begins to pour hot oil onto his back, face, and well, it's pretty bad, let's just say that. He also enjoys stabbing people with needles. It's kind of a signature move. It's worth noting that Kakihara has a Glasgow smile, but unlike the Joker, his is unhealed and literally kept together by piercings through his lips. At one point, a guy pulls the piercings out of his face, ripping his lips open. Kakihara retaliates by stabbing a needle through the guy's cheeks and yanking it out, ripping the guy's face completely open. Yeah, Kakihara is one ruthless psycho. He even cuts part of his tongue off at one point. There's there's so many moments like that, I could go on forever, but you get the idea. So yeah, the blood, gore, and torture are bad, but surprisingly it's not the most unsettling part of this manga. So Kakihara obviously has a thing for torture, not just on others, but on himself, and he actually gets sexually aroused by pain. And so does Ichi. So basically, Ichi gets aroused every time he kills people or even watches people being injured or killed. In fact, he jerks off after his killing sprees. It kind of sucks because you actually sympathize with him and he's a really badass character other than this element, which just makes you cringe. I'll give you an example that to me was one of the most fucked up moments in the whole thing and probably on the iceberg so far. Ichi often goes to a prostitute who he develops feelings for. This prostitute is abused by her partner and Ichi decides he's going to kill the guy. Well, he shows up to their house House one night and witnesses the abuse firsthand as the guy beats the living hell out of her and then begins to use her for the dirty deed. So what does Ichi do? Does he go in and take the dude out? No. Ichi watches through the window and beats off. 
Obviously, Ichi has major issues, and you find out why through flashback sequences, but man, that kind of stuff is just hard to stomach. So Kakihara and Ichi play this game of cat and mouse as Ichi continues killing for his uncle and Kakihara tracks him down. It is one of the most wild mangas I've ever read, but I can't say it's not gripping. Tier 9 PTSD Radio. PTSD Radio is a horror manga anthology that revolves around the legend of Ogushi, the god of hair. Through short vignettes resembling tuning into radio frequencies, the anthology explores the horror of human hair. The chapters are accompanied by radio frequencies that fade in and out, connecting different time periods and intertwining stories. The stories within PTSD Radio generally follow various people who encounter escalating horror scenarios involving bizarre phenomena and grotesque faces. The narrative gradually reveals the connection between these events and the ancient curse ritual with a shrine dedicated to Ogushi in a Japanese town. There's an interesting backstory to this manga because it's somewhat based on the author's real life experiences. Apparently he began experiencing strange events in his rented office building, including scratching sounds, power outages, and foul odors. He then discovered a broken shrine hidden in the building. So he used this as inspiration for the manga along with some other real life incidents, such as the contorted face of a landlord during a rent dispute and his own diagnosis of a rare disorder after witnessing demonic entities. Assistants in the office also witnessed shadowy figures leading to their illness or sudden departure. Ultimately, the author made the decision to abandon the manga because of these events and how they've affected his real life. That's pretty unsettling. Ajime Kaishi, Fukushu number 31. This one follows a J-pop star who's considered to be the least popular of all the other idols in her group, number 31 on the list to be exact. She's not just the least popular, she's constantly bullied by the other stars, and I mean like intense abuse. They beat her up, tease her, call her ugly, the whole nine yards. Well, this boils up to the point where she finally just snaps and kills number 27. She then declares that she'll kill all 30 of the other idols and begins picking them off one by one. The other girls are so mean to her in such messed up ways that it's disturbing enough, but some of the ways that 31 kills them off are absolutely brutal. At one point she ties a wire around a post and ties the other end around a girl's neck. She then puts her in an elevator and sends it to the bottom floor, choking and eventually tearing the girl's head off. I gotta say, that's a pretty unique kill. In another instance, she's being hunted by two idols who also happen to be lovers. She eventually tricks one of them into killing the other by dressing them up in her outfit. So she thinks she's killing 31, but instead is killing her own girlfriend. 31 does all of this, by the way, with a psychotic smile and glee. Damn, 31 is a badass, I gotta say. Bibliomania. Bibliomania kind of surprised me. I saw the cover and thought, okay, it's gonna be some manga about a girl's body decaying or something, you know, the usual stuff. And I ended up reading it in one sitting because I just couldn't stop. It all begins with a girl named Alice who falls into a seemingly endless white room with a door in the middle. The door has a number above it, 430, and so does Alice's hand, which says 431. She then meets a character called the Serpent who says he owns this mansion and that it's been a long time since he's had a new guest. He then explains that Alice can have whatever she wants in this room by simply willing it into existence. But Alice says she doesn't want to live in a fake world, but wants to get out. Well, there's only one way out. It's to travel through the rooms and make it back to room 000. That's the only way to leave the mansion. However, the further Alice rushes forward and begins her journey through the rooms, her body begins to decay and transform. The rooms contain many bizarre individuals with disturbing wishes. In one room, a giant tyrant king judges a teen based on his sins. The teen was a ruthless bully who made another student's life a living hell, forcing him to act like his chair before beating him up. Eventually, the bullied student ended his own life over it. The tyrant king orders the teen to be beheaded, and we come to find that this king is actually the bullied teen who endlessly beheads the same bully over and over again, making a throne out of his head to sit on. There's another room where an old woman woman wishes herself to look beautiful forever, and even a pretty funny room where a large aging shut-in sees himself as a superhero saving the world and getting the girls. As I mentioned earlier, Alice slowly transforms as she progresses, and this is the most disturbing part of the manga as her body becomes quite grotesque. I won't say much more about this one because it's one of those stories that has some really big reveals throughout, and I know that it all sounds pretty absurd and a bit vague, but trust me, it all wraps up really nicely, and I'm actually looking forward to rereading it. Yin Yang Road. 
Yin Yang Road is another horror anthology manga. It has an interesting art style and is in full color, which is a nice change of pace. There are several stories, like one where a woman's about to head up to the roof of her building and jump, when she notices a woman in red has already done just this, and they lock eyes before the woman crashes into the pavement. From this point on, the girl begins seeing dead people, Six Sense style. She has a conversation with her boyfriend who can't see the ghosts, and it's revealed at the end that the boyfriend had been dead for 10 days and that he was a ghost all along. Nothing too original. One story is about a mysterious patient wearing a mask who shows up looking for help from a doctor. I don't know why I didn't expect it, but she turns out to be, of course, the slit mouth woman, a pretty popular Japanese folklore character. One of the strangest and most disturbing stories is about a woman who's working at a hair salon and weird things begin happening around her. Like a man who's getting his hair washed seeing a mass of human hair coming from the drain to choke him. Or the woman's boyfriend hallucinating a rotting head being cooked in a pot. Also, there's this strange character who shows up wearing a large stuffed bear mask who asks the woman to sew the face back up, which has been torn revealing a deformed face underneath. Well, the woman decides to help the entity sew the mask up. It's revealed in a flashback that as a teen, this woman's father forced her to have sex with him and some of the dialogue here is really messed up. And let's keep in mind that the mother and little brother are cowering in the corner of the room while this happens. Man, I really hope this dude gets what's coming to him. Well, he does. The daughter hangs him up by the neck and chops his wiener off, which he just throws into the toilet. I have no idea what's happening in this manga, but it's left me shocked and confused. Anyway, there's several more stories like this, but let's move on. Remake no Toko. Remake is about Toko, a strange godlike being who can transform people's bodies however they see fit, as long as they kiss her. Each chapter follows a different person with a different wish. The wishes tend to have a strange or negative side effect, like a girl who's being bullied for being overweight wishes that the body fat would just disappear. So she kisses Toko and finds that the fat starts disappearing along with the entirety of her body. One really standout story follows a high school girl who's bullied and degraded by her classmates. Even worse, they force her to take nude photos, which they sell online. This goes even further when they bring in some strange men to have their way with her. One of the guys literally says, I've been waiting to try a titty stomp, and then stomps on her titty. I mean, what the hell am I reading? Anyway, she makes a plea to Toko and kisses her. Toko transforms her body so that her arms form into large fleshy scissors, and she just goes on an absolute killing spree, slicing and dicing all of her bullies into bits, along with the rest of her school. Yeah, this one could definitely be added to the body horror iceberg. Chimamire Sukeban Chainsaw. This one is from your boy Mikamoto Rei, who also authored Satanister, Iron Ghost no Sojo, and Reiko the Zombie Shop. And this is just as weird, if not weirder, than all of those. It basically follows two high school girls, Giko and Nero. Nero is a Dr. Frankenstein-like mad scientist who can bring back the dead and modify human bodies to make them zombie-like killing machines. She's done just that to her entire class, except Giko, who, with only a chainsaw in hand, plans to kill Nero. Nero and all the undead classmates in her way. It's a bizarre premise, but I mean, what would you expect from this author? It's also got all the blood and gore you could ask for with Giko slicing up dozens of her classmates along with some specially modified mini bosses like a guy who can sprout tentacles from his body. The weirdest thing about this is the fact that Nero motivates her teen boy slaves by beating them off, I think. I mean, that's what's happening here, I think. Uh, what the hell? Grimace. Grimace is one of the newer manga on the list. A family of four moves into an apartment complex, and when they run into the owner, they realize something might be off. The owner wears a paper crown and is constantly smiling. A family friend who invited them to stay at the apartments gives them a warning. When the owner is around, you must always smile, or terrible things will happen. Namely, death, as they find out when a man is found dead in the parking lot after refusing to smile. Things escalate when the family dismiss the owner and awake in the middle of the night to find them hanging by their necks in makeshift nooses. They get loose and decide they need to escape the apartment. Meanwhile, we see a very strange dialogue between the owner and his uncle, while the owner is literally having what seems to be forced sex with a woman. By the end of this exchange, we find that this is the uncle's daughter. That is to say, the owner's cousin. The family makes a break for it in the middle of the night, and that's as far as the manga goes right now. 
Talk about a cliffhanger. The idea of a strange smile cult is pretty cool, and the fear that everyone exhibits of the owner makes him an intimidating villain. I mean, watching the uncle play nice with a huge smile on his face while watching his daughter being defiled in front of him is absolutely disturbing. Laughing Vampire So at this point, Suhiro Maruo has become the anti-hero of the iceberg, contributing some of the most off-the-wall entries. So when I first started reading Laughing Vampire, I was surprised because it had such a straightforward story. A 130-year-old hideous vampire woman finds a high school boy, Mori, and turns him into a vampire by cutting her tongue and having him drink the blood. Now he must serve her as a sort of apprentice. Mori encounters and drinks the blood of one of his classmates, Luna, and from here we follow both of their separate stories for a bit. Mori continues killing innocent people across the city and doing the old hag's bidding, including a really messed up sequence where he brings her several babies which he stole from the hospital. She makes a literal bloodbath out of the baby's corpses and just bathes in the bathtub with them. It's pretty off-putting to say the least. Meanwhile, Luna is kidnapped by a man in a clown outfit who looks like the famous serial killer John Wayne Gacy, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Well, we really go full Suhiro Maruo because the clown takes her back to his dirty apartment and proceeds to... Well, I'm sure you can guess. The next day, Luna's classmates find out what happened to her and actually tease her about it. What kind of a depraved school is this? Well, some of Luna's classmates actually try and kill her and throw her body out of a window. Before she dies, Mori finds her and makes her a vampire too. Of course, as soon as Luna comes to grips with her vampire powers, they track down the clown and get revenge. And I mean, they cut off his wiener and shove it in his mouth and then hang him before they start to make out the moonlight. It's a beautiful love story, honestly. Tier 10. Okay, quick warning for tier 10. While a lot of what I've covered in this iceberg so far has been highly disturbing, this last tier I dedicated to the absolute most depraved entries. So just an extra little warning, if you wanna get off the bus now, here's your chance. Also, I wanna point out that there's going to be some segments of this tier where I won't have any actual manga pages on the screen because some of these barely have a single panel that isn't full of horrific imagery that I can't get away with showing on YouTube. But without further ado, Tier 10. Bizarre Crime Division, Marusai. This is one of the darkest on the list. It follows various detectives within a special unit who look into cases involving sex-related crimes. So each chapter tells a different story, usually through flashbacks recounting the crimes. The first story is about a secret group of men who are into necrophilia. That is, they want to have sex with corpses. So they hire a woman to take drugs that cause her body to fall into a death-like coma, and then they have their way with her. It's really disturbing obviously and even more messed up is that they present the whole thing as a funeral with a casket and everything and it gets worse it gets much much worse so during these heinous acts she ends up actually dying and the absolute sickos decide to just continue with the now real dead body finishing off by pissing into the open casket nice in another story, a young newlywed couple volunteer to take part in an experiment testing out an underground shelter. They end up getting trapped inside after an accident which caused half of the shelter to flood. To top it all off, the woman becomes pregnant while trapped inside. Fast forward seven months later as the detective attempts to rescue them, and when they eventually do, the wife emerges from the shelter completely nude. Having gone mad, she killed and ate her husband, and she also shoved one of his bones up her... Yeah, that kid has no chance of a normal life, does he? And what the hell, let's do one more story. In this story, a man hurts his finger and goes to a doctor. They have a pleasant exchange and the patient likes her. Weeks later, he gets a call from the doctor asking him to visit her. When he does, she shows him one of her patients who is missing all four limbs and has sex with random men in order to feel needed. Well, the doctor admires this for some reason and asks the man to hit her with his car so that she'll lose her legs and he does. They form a strange relationship after this that falls into all forms of depravity with an emphasis on abusing her for pleasure. Eventually, she asks him to cut off her arms with a saw and shove them up her orifices. My Chan's Daily Life my Chan's Daily Life is considered one of the most disturbing mangas ever made, and has actually become the sort of staple for Eroguro since it became well known on the internet a few years back. So, Mai is a normal enough girl who works as a maid in a mansion under her mistress, Kaede. The Dark Twist? Mai is used as a prostitute by Kaede and must submit to any request of the clients who visit the mansion. The even darker twist? 
Mai has the ability to regenerate her body after any injury, including regrowing limbs, much like Wolverine or Deadpool. Because of this ability, Mai isn't simply performing sex acts on the customers, but they are inflicting horrible bodily harm on her while they do their business. This involves pretty much any disgusting thing you can think of, including beating, burning, stabbing, cutting, disemboweling, the removal of limbs, beheading, and all manner of general abuse that I wouldn't dream of trying to show on YouTube. But let me assure you, it really is hard to stomach. It sometimes doesn't even feel fetish oriented, but instead like the author tried to think of the most gruesome thing he could, almost to the point of being kind of juvenile, like middle school kids came up with it. There's a lot of absolutely vile things that happen in this manga, like the limbless pet girl Mai has to take care of, or Mai's teen brother who has the same powers as her and is abused in the same ways. But probably the worst thing that happens, which I'm honestly reluctant to even describe, is when Mai becomes pregnant and a customer, who also happens to be a supposed world leader, cuts the baby out of Mai's stomach and then proceeds to, well, Try to think of the worst possible thing someone could do to it. He does that. Remember when I said that it sometimes feels like edgy middle school kids came up with some of these ideas? Well, the world leader takes the baby and literally makes a baby in a blender joke while putting it in an actual blender. Keep in mind this is all done to Mai's baby. Kaede actually puts a stop to the man by stabbing him in the head. Fast forward into the near future and we see Kaede approach Mai asking her to prepare for more clients. I mean, I thought at least Kaede would have a change of heart or something after she had to kill a client, but no, it literally ends with them just going back into it. Yeah, you know when people say this isn't for the faint of heart? This isn't for the strong of heart. Hell, I don't know who this is for. Comedy Station Massacre. This one is really hard to explain mostly because it hasn't been translated into English. It's, as far as I can tell, just a series of strange and disturbing sequences that all show people either having sex or being involved in strange sexual acts. There's a weird theme, which is that everything seems to be sports related, especially Olympic style of events. One sequence, a man is about to get it on with a girl and when he takes off his pants, he has a baseball bat and baseballs for genitals, which, don't worry, he still utilizes. I can't tell if this is just a sick joke or what. I mean, it's highly disturbing, but at the same time, you almost laugh in shock because of what's going on. Like a scene where we see several Olympic events where girls are timed on how long they can lift a weight, which they're lifting using their butts. There's also one where they do hurdles, but the hurdles have spikes on top, which you can imagine has disastrous results. It's bizarre and terrible. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. Applicant for Death. Applicant for Death has a really messed up premise. Essentially, each chapter follows a different applicant. The applicants are people who have truly disturbing kinks, and uh, kinks is putting it lightly, but basically they want to die while having sex. There's a service that will fulfill this request so long as they can film it, presumably for sale. I didn't get too far into this one, what can I say, it's horrible, but the first chapter features a girl who gets turned on by heads exploding, and oh god, it gets worse. She realized this was the case after watching footage of the JFK assassination. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't even have words. So there's a woman who basically assists the people in these acts and she goes through a specific process so that she can shoot the girl in the head without killing her so that she can enjoy the experience. It's one of the most messed up things I've seen in this entire iceberg and I think I lost yet another part of my soul. Keira Mono Tachi no Jikan which translates to Time of the Beast. This manga takes no time to just jump right into the story. In the opening sequence, a pop star, Irie, wakes up in a man's house. The man proposes to her as soon as she awakes. He then explains that he works at the grocery store that Irie shops at. He followed her home and beat her on the head with a wrench before kidnapping her. We also learn that the kidnapper, named Hiro, has been stalking her for months, even stealing her garbage and keeping some of her old clothes. Unfortunately, that's not the only thing he collects. He has dozens of her used pads and mentions that he knows her menstrual cycle and even frequency of masturbation. It's so damn creepy and this is all within the first few pages. It escalates really fast from here. He immediately forces a sex acts on her and then puts her in a diaper and binds her until he gets back from work. There's a really disturbing moment when Irie asks him why he's doing it and he simply says, because you smiled at me. Him saying this with that creepy ass smile is haunting. When she resists him, he beats the hell out of her and forces her to eat out of a dog bowl, which he covers with his own bodily fluid. So she decides she's going to try and play along until she can escape. This is really hard to read though, as she has to pretend to enjoy pleasing him and it's all weirder that he talks to her in the third person like she's a pet. Ivory begins trying to get information about Hero through conversation and we learn that his mom was abusive and abusive doesn't even scratch the surface. His mom not only beat him, 
but made him have sex with her. It's absolutely revolting, and we can see now how he ended up being such a psychopath. The worst part about it is that after Hero explains his past and shows some of the horrible scars all over his body, it kind of seems like Irie sympathizes with him and even bonds with him. At this point, some of the online comments sum it up pretty well, but don't worry, somehow this manga gets even more insane. We learn in a flashback chapter that Irie was physically and sexually abused by her father as a teenager, so, you know, that's fun. But it might explain why Irie seems to sympathize with her kidnapper a little, and the Stockholm Syndrome starts to set in more and more as they almost begin acting like a couple. We get more truly disgusting backstory into Hiro and his mother, who we learn hanged herself. Eventually, Hiro forgets to lock his room while he's at work, and Irie ventures inside, discovering an even darker secret. He finds dozens of various body parts kept in jars, along with pictures of tortured and dead women. Apparently, Hiro has kidnapped many girls in the past. Of course, while Irie has the disturbing realization, Hiro shows up and catches her before brandishing a large blade and declaring he's going to finally kill her. This turns into a suspenseful game of hide and seek, while Hiro explains he's kidnapped many women in the past, from high school girls to housewives. He even mentions kidnapping pregnant women because it turns him on. Ah man, what the hell? He ends up catching Irie and tying her to a chair, and then declares he's going to chop off her limbs and make her into a human stick that walks around like a dog and depends solely on him to take care of her. He does all of this while pulling off her fingernails with pliers. Luckily, Irie escapes using a box knife and hides in the woods. Unfortunately, Hero finds her, but she turns the table by slicing him in the crotch and tying him up now. When we jump ahead to what seems like some time in the future, Irie seems to be coming home to her apartment, apologizing for being late, and and who is she talking to? Well, she opens up her closet to reveal Hero, only his limbs are chopped off and he's wearing a diaper and a collar. She feeds him and lovingly calls him her pet. The manga actually continues after this, and the story evolves in a weird way with another time jump where Irie is now married, and she and her husband both try to manage taking care of Hiro as a pet while trying to live their normal lives. It's kind of whack, and it should have just ended with the reveal of Hiro as a stick person, in my opinion. <laughs> 